Okay, so today continuing on the audio front, really, um, I've got a lot of crossovers in front of me and I thought let's do a quick conversation about them and uh, give a very brief explanation as to how they work. So what is a crossover? Um, you've got an amplified signal, might be coming from your mixer or instrument or, or whatever, uh, MP3 player, doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, that's being fed through an amplifier and the output is going to a speaker. Uh, that speaker will be made of usually two or more components. That will be a, a low frequency driver and a high frequency driver. Uh, it could be a 12 inch low frequency, 15, 10, uh, sometimes smaller, 8. It really depends um, on what size brand and the High frequency driver um, could be a one inch or one and a half inch compression driver. Um, uh, there's a, there's loads of different configurations there. So this is another video I'm going to attempt to do in one take, simply because that's just easier for me, uh, explaining of how all this stuff works and why it's important. So in front of me, I've got a bunch of crossovers. These have come out of uh, drivers I've or cabinets I've already got. Um, they're from different uh, models, but they all perform the same or similar function. And that is, you send one signal in from your amplifier, and that splits it out into two or more um, outputs to drive the drivers. Now, how does it do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, simply put, if I can say so, it's um, a combination of using coils, or inductors and capacitors. The very simple way to kind of try and visualize this is understanding at the first instance what an inductor is, what a capacitor is, and how that affects things when it comes to music. Or, or rather I should say an AC alternating current uh, voltage source, um, such as an amplifier. So in the case of a coil. Uh, let's try and explain this first. I haven't done any preparation on this, this is literally just off the top of my head, so excuse me if I mess this up. Um, simply put, uh, a coil is a device that will allow um, current to flow through it uh, at a low frequency. So, um, if you have a waveform or frequency of around, let's just pick a random number in there, 100 hertz for argument's sake, uh, this coil, or rather, let's look at this one, will allow that to pass through. Um, yeah, the size is directly relative to the kind of frequency band which they'd work in. Smaller coils tend to be um, for higher frequencies and larger ones like this one for lower frequencies. Um, so let's take this one for example. That will allow low frequencies to pass through it. Um, as the frequency increases, the resistance of the coil or the inductor increases. So um, that is essentially why uh, the higher the frequency goes, the higher the resistance of the uh, coil becomes and the less amount of energy that can pass through it to your driver. Um, now, interestingly, capacitors do the exact opposite. They block low frequency or DC uh, voltages um, or currents if you like and the useful thing about that is is that enables you to remove uh, low frequency content from a driver like a tweeter that only wants high frequency. Um, so I've actually drawn this out previously uh, this wasn't any preparation for this but I thought it'd be interesting to share if I can. So I shall turn this light off and it might make it a bit clearer. What we have here is a, a circuit diagram of one of these crossovers. Um, I was just curious and drew one out just to see how it worked. Um, and so knowing what the values were, um, I could then either repair or replace or update any of my existing crossovers if I wanted to in the future. You can see that we have the signal coming in here and that's split off into two directions. One goes to the tweeter or the compression driver and the other side goes to the low frequency driver. Now as I said uh, capacitors at low frequency 
uh, they allow um, uh, they well they basically the lower the frequency the higher the resistance is of a capacitor uh, the inductor is the opposite way around so let's imagine we're feeding a frequency of 100 Hertz into this circuit so the 100 Hertz is a low frequency um, it's going to pass through this inductor and the capacitor is going to have no effect on that uh, and that allows it to go to the driver if we then say let's instead of 100 hertz let's put 10 kilohertz through this this coil will become high resistance or high impedance or higher impedance and the capacitor will then be conducting and will essentially will block it and uh, what that does then is that prevents a high frequency going to this driver um, now the tweeter looks a little bit more complicated um, two reasons for this um, rather than just having one pole uh, this uh, the high pass section has two, uh, it allows a steeper slope um, on the kind of frequency response and also there's a bunch of resistors on here and here and those act as kind of um, an attenuator, I, it reduces the output level of the compression driver. The reason, one of the reasons you may want to do that is because compression drivers are way more sensitive to um, audio than uh, a low frequency driver is and so to make this uh, sound balanced and to make sure that the low frequency and the high frequency sound right and you don't need to do any strange EQ uh, being fed into this uh, you basically do uh, an attenuation on the high frequency section and that will reduce the output of the tweeter and match it with the low frequency. So I'm trying to do this as easy as I can and hopefully you can follow. This is, if you look, the opposite way around to how the sub's done. So on the sub side we went through a inductor, then we went through a capacitor to the negative side. On this side, we, we, instead of going through an inductor, we go through capacitors and then there's an inductor basically going to ground. Um, so what happens if we try and feed a low frequency into the high frequency driver let's put um, 100 hertz let's try that again so we feed 100 hertz this is coming into here these capacitors are not really going to be interested in 100 hertz uh, they essentially what happens is they can charge up really quickly once the capacitor is charged up there is no current flowing for the capacitor and at the same time there's an inductor connecting that to ground so that acts as a high pass and therefore uh, it's blocking the low frequency um, and that just feeds into another section and does exactly the same thing. Uh, now, I might not actually be, uh, I haven't checked any of this, so <laughs> it may not be relevant. The scales are all going to be wrong. I don't know if it's very, uh, mm, hold on, let's see if I can make this make any more sense, maybe. Okay, here we go. Right, uh, this very roughly is a frequency response curve. It's not going to be exactly right because I haven't simulated the speaker parameters, but it will give you a rough idea. So I can go on this side and I will mute the high frequency driver. And this is the response curve we get for the low frequency side. So you can see um, at above one kilohertz, it start well already by then it's rolling off, and um, the end the. Scale. Well, maybe we should talk about that in another video. Uh, for the dB scale on the side, essentially it's attenuating that uh, increasingly as the frequency goes up. Um, and if we unmute this one, and then we mute this one, here we go. And we have the frequency response curve approximately for the compression driver. Um, you can see it's kind of got uh, a bump in there. Uh, I haven't really looked at that. Mostly that would be, I imagine, is simply due to the fact that I haven't put any data in to simulate the uh, uh, kind of interaction of the compression driver has uh, with the circuit at all. It's just not in any way calibrated, but it does give you an idea. Uh, so let's unmute the low frequency driver again. And then we basically have our response curve. So you can see that the high frequency section is lower, the output is attenuated 
by very approximately, if we look at the numbers, 70, 60, 50. Uh, what are we talking? Uh, 20 dB um, from the sub, and that's probably about right. Uh, I mean, just uh, just guessing. Um, so, what else can we talk about? Uh, yeah, so hopefully that gives you some sort of an idea of how crossover works. Um, some people sort of design them by ear, and they'll play around with values uh, until it kind of sounds what they want. You can do that in real time by using a, like a frequency source, so like a frequency generator, and measuring the output coming from the speakers. Everything will interact with this and alter the response curves. Anything as simple as the kind of the box size, um, the size of your driver, the kind of port, the port tuning, all of that is going to make a big difference. Um, and so in some instances, this is you know trial and error, see what you like, compare it to things that you like the sound of, and you can kind of tune it the way you like. Um, the other thing just to bear in mind, obviously, is the value of these capacitors, turn this light back, and um, uh, resistors as well. Uh, the resistors dissipate heat, um, depending on how hard they're driven. Um, you need to make sure there's kind of airflow. Uh, one of the reasons these are out of the cases is they're subject to vibrations. They get battered around by the low frequency from the main driver, and that causes fatigue, uh, and in some cases can cause dry joints and vibrations, um, which isn't great. If you have a component break loose of the board, then it's obviously going to affect how the filter works, and you can lead to situations where you blow a driver simply because uh, your crossover is not working properly and you're passing frequencies to it you never intended. Um, one interesting point, actually, which isn't related to crossovers uh, about these drivers is their inbuilt high frequency protection. So, what we have here is a set of um, components, and I believe they're MOSFETs, I can't remember now. And the way this works is uh, again, we talked about limiters in the last video, is um, high energy transient um, sort of inputs into a speaker will produce a situation where you can uh, uh, move the cone if you like either in a driver or in a high frequency uh, compression driver more than you intend to doing damage you could uh, have a um, let's say um, a transient which could blow a driver um, and compression drivers are much more sensitive to this they don't have the ability to dissipate any kind of thermal um, heat as easily as a sub does uh, and so they're a bit more delicate so one way you can protect them is in some crossovers you have um, literally a light bulb uh, <laughs> uh, it's some of you if you're watching this you may have come across this where you drive a speaker too high uh, hard and in some cases you can see light appearing inside the ports of a speaker cabinet uh, and basically what that is is you're passing too much power through the crossover um, it's the high frequency driver in line with the so let's let's have a look say for example here um, we might put it in this portion there you could put a little bulb and when you draw uh, or put supply too much voltage to this section uh, too much current flows through it and the bulb will light up um, the interesting thing is if you do that with a light bulb um, very hot metal has a high resistance so the bulb by its nature heating up um, starts glowing the resistance increases a lot and that acts as a current limiter to your high frequency driver uh, protecting it. That's one way of doing it. Uh, in the case of the manufacturer designed these ones, they took a different approach. They've done it electronically. So rather than having a bulb inside, which is kind of um, a bit slow to respond, if you like, because you have to heat up the element in the first instance, um, they have what we call a, um, now let me think, it's kind of like a, um, a crowbar circuit, so or a brick wall uh, sort of limiter in some ways. What it does, if a voltage exceeds a certain amount, these devices turn on and uh, quite brutally limit the voltage going any higher, uh, thus protecting the um, mid and high frequency sections of uh, this speaker cabinet. So... Those are 
a simplistic uh, straightforward ways of offering protection to stop people um, or to help stop people damaging stuff um, they're not perfect uh, in the case of things like this uh, that can cause sort of clipping or, or um, um, also extra load on the outputs of your amplifiers if these are clamping themselves down then your amplifier may pick that up um, I have seen instances of some amplifiers some big name amplifiers actually completely shutting down and turning themselves off in the most horrendous way possible um, I may have first hand experience of that and it was not a great experience and so I don't use those anymore um, <clears throat> um, in any case so let's have a quick summary we've talked about briefly how a crossover works what inductors are, what capacitors are, why there's resistors, and uh, very basic ways of protecting your high frequency section. Uh, now, this might spur some interest. Maybe you might decide to go and look into this further yourselves, but in at least in a very sort of basic form, hopefully, um, I really didn't intend to talk for another 16 odd minutes for a video waffle in a way, but here we are. Um, it's done now. Let's just chuck this up on YouTube and see what you think. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this anyway, uh, um, I will say, uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, like, give it a follow. I might find something um, as I sort of see how and where and if this channel develops. Um, talk about more stuff in the future like this. Uh, thanks for watching.